All right, guys. Um, thanks for jumping on, uh, you know, to the webinar. Uh, my name is Justin Nabiri. I am, um, I've been at Peer Cars for, uh oh, my screen is frozen. What is there it goes? Okay. I've been at Peer Cars for about three and a half years. Um, been, you know, in the automotive industry working with data, you know, probably for a total of six years. I uh, used a lot of different data platforms. So, what we're going to be going into today, um, is really a focus on using that data and driving the link between that data, your marketing, uh, and your dealership, right? It seems, you know, with my experience, uh, I often come across dealerships where, you know, there's a disconnect between, you know, the data and the marketing, um, the marketing and the sales team and everything in between. And I'm, and what I mean by sales teams, I'm actually talking like the showroom floor, you know, what you're focused on in your showroom doesn't always mirror what you're focused on in your marketing. Um, so with that said, um, you know, I'm a big, big sports fan. Um, I lean heavily towards the hockey side when it comes to sports. So there are going to be a lot of sports, uh, references in this webinar. So hope you're, hope you're game for that. So we're going to start early on with that one. Um, I would say that, you know, one of the most important pieces, you know, you know, when you're a dealership going out into the market, trying to develop a marketing plan, build your brand and, you know, put your footprint out there. One of the most important pieces is just planning, understanding your market. And I, that ball gets dropped uh, more often than um, I'd like to say it does. It's, it's really something that, you know, at the dealership level, we, because we're, such a month to month industry, you know, we, we kind of forget how important it is to plan. You know, we're always building the plane while flying. And some of the greatest athletes of all times, you know, there, there have also been known to be the greatest planners and Peyton Manning and Wayne Gretzky to me stand out. Peyton Manning is infamous for how much he practiced, right? Uh, a lot of the players that played with Peyton Manning said the hardest that they've ever played in practice was when they played with Peyton Manning. Um, some of the funny stories that come from him is, you know, after a road game, Peyton Manning would sit in the back of the airplanes with an assistant sitting next to him while the team was sitting, you know, rows ahead of them, probably sleeping, uh, relaxing, trying to decompress after, you know, planning for a week and then executing a, you know, a tough NFL game. Uh, Peyton Manning was in the back watching the game tape from that game. And his assistant's job was whenever Peyton Manning wanted to speak to somebody, he would have him go find that person and bring him back to Peyton Manning. And it didn't matter if you were sleeping or not. If Peyton Manning wanted to talk to you to go over a play, you would be woken up. And coaches weren't immune to this either. Um, and one of the things that that did is, it, it, you know, when you're on a Peyton Manning-led team, a, a team that is well-prepared, there are no passengers. Everybody's a participant. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, too, probably, in my opinion, the greatest single sport athlete of all time. Um, Feel free to argue with me that offline. I will put you to shame analytically. Um, when he was a kid, he would sit in front of the TV screen and he had a pen and notepad with him where he drew out a hockey ring and he would just watch a hockey game and follow the puck around with the pen. And after the game, he would look down at his pad and he would see where the uh, pen crossed the most, obviously where like the thickest ink spots were. and because of that, he gained the knowledge of knowing where the puck was most likely to be. So he was the most dangerous player with the puck in NHL history, but he doesn't get enough credit for being the most dangerous player without the puck. And it's all about, you know, what, understanding their game. They Peyton Manning and Wayne Gretzky understood their craft um, better than anybody else. So how does that relate to the automotive industry, right? Well, you need to understand your market, right? So a couple questions that you should keep in mind while I'm running uh, through this webinar today is what data do you use to prepare, execute, review today to determine if your marketing is impactful? Really, basically, are, are you blindfolded while marketing your cars? And, you know, hopefully you're not doing that. It's 2019 and everything has a data point. Um, how often uh, do you bring your goals established from marketing meetings to your sales team? 
right? Is your sales team aware of the zip codes and cities that you were losing in and need to see growth in, right? So basically that goes back to, you know, are you making your sales team, your desk managers, your GSMs, your internet directors, are they passengers or are they participants in helping your dealership, you know, move in the direction you want it to move in? Um, and number three, do all the marketing channels and providers that you use, you know, work towards the same goal, right? Um, if you're a dealership in today's world, you probably have, you know, two to three to four, sometimes five different marketing providers, each that fulfill their own purpose. Um, how often are you communicating with them the strategies that you're trying to, you know, produce with all your other marketing providers? Is everybody on the same page? Or are you allowing these marketing providers who you spend money on to be participants too, right? Because if you're not allowing them to be participants, they're going to be passengers, right? You want to get rid of the passengers inside your dealership. And the best way to do that is, you know, by leading them through data, right? So what is zip driven, right? Zip driven is a web-based analytics platform that gathers displays sales and registration data for vehicles in your market. It takes your dealership. It makes you the center of your universe. There's, that this is going to talk a lot about zip driven as we go on today but trust me there's a lot of other platforms out there that provide this type of registration data in an actionable format that you can use as well you know from my experience and you know because i am at pure cars i, I do sound like a homer when i say this but zip driven is the most efficient platform when it comes to using this data from helping you get to a to b um, so what i consider zip driven is this is your game footage, right? It's your pen and paper. It's the marketing, it's the MVP of your marketing strategy, right? Zip driven is going to be where you learn and understand your market at a big picture and at a granular level, right? And it, how it does that is, well, like anything in this world, it has mountains of data, right? So conquesting data um, from if you wanna conquest, other makes if you want to you know conquest other competitors inside your market uh if you want to know your dealership efficiency scores <coughs> excuse me zip driven provides all this data right oh, excuse me i've been battling a cold let me take a drink of water real quick uh, okay so sorry about that i uh obviously have uh, been battling a cold. I usually don't sound this raspy. <clears throat> so the mountains of data that Zip Driven provides is really, really useful, but it's also, it could be data overload if you don't know what to look for, right? Would developing just a simple marketing strategy from getting your dealership from A to B, right? So the first thing that you should focus on is understanding your market at a big picture level, right? So a make snapshot, where do you rank in your market today for a specific geo over a specific time period? Do you know who your biggest competitor is in the, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> All right, I'm back. So do you know who your biggest competitors are in your backyard? where you're losing in your backyard at your make level, right? You need to understand that because, listen, every one of your competitors, they're beating you for specific reasons, whether it could be pricing, whether it could be inventory, um, whether it could be how they're located, their, mark, their messaging, whatever it is, understanding who your competitors are and where they're located and where they're beating you is going to help you take the next step to actually building a marketing plan and understanding your market. So, you know, breaking down your dealership at the make level from a lease first finance rate, how are you, how many cars are you leasing? How many are you financing? How, how is that in comparison to the market? What is your model share at? What are your top models? What are the top makes in your market outside of your make, et cetera, right? The big picture. You need to understand that so you can go in a little bit deeper and say, okay, I need to know where my dark marketing dollars need to be spent based on profitability, right? So what zip codes am I most profitable in? And what zip codes 
am I not? And by profitability, I mean total sales, right? Where are the sales coming from versus where are they not, right? You don't, just like on a sports team, you want to be focused on, you know, your star players, right? You want to build game plans, get the ball in their hands. Right. You don't you, you never game plan for your backup running back. You game plan for your starting running back. So you don't want to treat every zip code the same. Right. So going into the zip code sales and understanding your market share. At the zip code level. And saying. And identifying those zip codes where you need to see growth or where you're not seeing growth. All right. So going down a little bit further, thinking going into granularity. Right. And talking more about star players, more specifically, every dealership, you have your core models, right? Every dealership, you're, you're going to be focusing on your, your three to four core models every single month. If you're Toyota, you know that you, it's Camry, it's your RAV4, it's your Tundra, or it's your Tacoma, or, you know, depending on what market you're in, it could be your four runners, right? So understanding your, uh, your inventory at a granular level from a snapshot of where do my Tundras perform really, really well, or where do my Camrys perform really, really well? I, uh, one of the most common mistakes that I see across the industry is that you we're treating all our inventory the same and we're trading every zip code the same, right? Which means I'm marketing my Tundras and my Camrys in the area in the same amount of money that only my Tundras really perform well in, right? Tundra buyers are not always the same demographic as your Camry buyer, or especially not your Prius buyers. So why are you marketing them the same with the same amount of dollars to them in the same areas? You need to be able to break that out and efficiently funnel those funds to specific models that perform well in those specific zip codes and have the analysts, the analysis there to show that, right? So, one of the really uh, beneficial things that Zip Driven provides and that, you know, I'm sure other marketing platforms provide is that it breaks out your models zip code by zip code and your market share for each zip code. Um, and you see the snapshot here, you can see that, you know, a dealership, you know, inside their own 10 mile radius, there were six rogue sales and they had none of those sales and it's inside their 10 mile radius. Well, that could be an area based on the time period that they would want to focus on. Right. And Zip Driven takes it a step further and it also will list out your competitors at the model level saying, OK, well, in this zip code, you sold 18 rogues. Your competitors sold five and two and one. Right. And it'll tell you who those competitors are. So, you know where those customers are going. Right. It's understanding that game tape, understanding your market, allowing you to make educated decisions. With your marketing dollars and to execute beyond there. So I'm gonna stop right there because, you know, with the hundreds of dealerships that I've worked front with, you know, in LA where I'm based, um, all the way back to Colorado where I'm from, uh, the common question that I'll get asked here is like, are you seriously telling me that I need to have not only have a big picture marketing plan for my dealership, but I also need a marketing plan for every single model in my lot? And the answer is no. I'm not saying that I, I know that at some point it's, it's just kind of overkill. Um, but you do need to have that level of granularity at least with your core models. And I would say that there's probably not a dealership out there that has not come across the situation where they have become heavy in one specific model that maybe wasn't a core model or wasn't a focus for them and needed to find a way to move those models out of their lot, get rid of some of that metal. And it'd be nice to know that you have a platform or something that drives those problems that says, listen, you don't want to spend too much dollars on these, but you need to move these cars. Here's the areas that you should market them in, right? Instead of just blindly saying, crap, I'm heavy in this model, just push everything we can towards those models until they're gone because I don't know a better way of doing it. And data is the best way to do that, in my opinion. Um, I would love to hear other opinions on the way, but if you're looking at, you know, being efficient and effective with your marketing plan, then you can't fly blind. So obviously understanding your market is really, really important, right? You need to know what your market share is for a specific geo, 
for a specific time period. You need to know that for your core models and you need to be able to execute that across your platforms, right? That you're using to market. The next big piece of this is incorporating that into your showroom, right? A lot of the times, you know, when I'm meeting with general managers or the principals of dealerships, you know, we'll spend an hour to two hours diving through the data, diving through their performance, finding really, really good nuggets of information where we find that we're dropping the ball. And we put in fixes in our marketing for that. Now, when I walk out of that room and out of that door, that conversation usually stays inside that room. It does not get passed to the sales team of that dealership, right? You know, those who are on the front lines, your GSMs need to know that you're focused on these zip codes because you're losing to this dealer in these models, right? Your salespeople need to know that right? because they're the ones handling those leads. So, oh, excuse me one more time. Oh, I thought I beat this cold. It's uh, apparently beating me down. So, uh, like I was saying, those who are on the front lines, they're the ones handling those leads. They know where those ones customers are coming from. They're the ones who are talking to them first. They need to know that these customers are priority, right? And that if they're willing to walk out of that dealership and go to your competitor, that's another battle lost. Right. And thus, you now have a marketing plan that isn't synced with your sales team. And so the fixes that we put into that is, listen, you need to bring this data into your sales meetings. Right. My dealerships that I work with, we bring zip driven into the sales meeting. And sometimes I even come into the sales meeting and I walk them through what we're trying to do to help them understand. Right. There's nothing more that sparks a competitive spirit than walking into a room full of sales guys who are naturally born with that competitive bone and showing them that they're losing. Nothing makes them want to get out of bed more than knowing that they're losing, right? So bring that data into them, get them aligned, develop some contests and rewards for your sales team, you know, that align with your sales goals or with your marketing and sales goals, right? I mean, a lot of the focus is obviously hitting quantity, hitting numbers, hitting that, you know, your OEM factory number for the month. It's important, yes, but there could also be other goals aligned into that that can not only help you achieve that number that you have to hit that month, but also help you achieve your marketing goal for long-term success at your dealership, right? It's, it's about getting creative, and I have dealerships doing that and are being successful with that today. As well as like, sometimes you just need to evaluate your lead and sales process, right? Some of, some of the biggest mistakes could be found that, you know, zip codes that you're losing market share in, well, we, we identify that they might be subprime markets and typical requests that come in from these zip codes might be way below invoice. Well, focusing on those uh, zip codes, finding out that information and understanding that you know, how to fix that during the sales process to get those customers in and service those customers um, could go a long way into helping you take back your market. Um, yeah, it's, it's sound, I make it sound simple, but it's a lot of work. Uh, so marketing execution, right? It's, it's all about having everybody on the same page right yeah you know, there there are no passengers for your marketing plan and at your dealership everybody needs to be rowing the boat in the same direction right and so understanding that you need to know what your addressable market is and you know the way we come up with that is you, you need to know where where inside your market you have actual sales penetration that is worth spent dollars on. You know, that's what we do here at Pure Cars. We establish that for you. We let you know what your addressable market is based on your sales uh, penetration. You need to take, you need to understand what zips take priorities over others and what models take priorities over others. And I, I would imagine that last one, if zip driven is telling you what your core models are, the, the problem is bigger than zip driven. Um, and if you look at the screenshots below, one of the one of the really cool things that you know we're able to do is we're able to track um, 
you know, the registration data by zip code, but also your current marketing performance and your current sales by the zip code, right? Being able to tell you, hey, if this, you know, 92667 or 677 is a uh, focus of yours, well, we can also track and tell you how you're doing in that zip code that month, how much you spent, how much you sold, right? So it's it's taking that previous data, that that game tape, if you will, and applying it to the actual game and seeing it play out in real life and seeing that progress through data uh, in real time. Um, and then measuring success. Uh, I, I would say this is one of the hardest things to quantify. Nobody wants to um, lay their neck on the line and say, well, if you run this strategy, you should expect these results. Um, and I think that's not the way to go. If you're focused on market share growth as a dealership, which every single dealership should be focused on market share growth, um, you should be able to roll out this strategy and see market share growth, right? As well as because there's no more passengers, you should see a lead close rate. Chances are the areas that you're focused in, the areas that you're marketing, when those leads are coming in, your team is aware that these ones are priorities. And that lead close rate of yours, you should see to go up. Um, and then also uh, one that you know might seem a little disconnected, but you should also see service retention growth, right? If your marketing plan is efficient and your dollars are being spent in the right markets, those customers that you're servicing for on the sales side should be coming back on the service side because a um, they are in your own PMA and you're the closest service center to them right? Which means that more customers in your backyard should be coming to your dealership. And B, whoever services with you buys from you, right? So chances are that you're going to start seeing that 80-20 that rule. 80% of my customers um, are were prior customers before, right? That's kind of the focus there. Um, so I'm um, a couple FAQs that I usually get asked when I'm executing this strategy and I'm presenting a tool like Zip Driven or, you know, just any tool in general. If you're a dealership and you're asking, you know, do I need to pay for extra data on my dealership? Um, doesn't my OEM already provide me this? It's a question that I come across uh, almost every single day. And I would say that, um, Listen, if you are able to take what the OEM provides you to and pull out this type of data, uh, which I have not been able to do myself, then by all means do it, right? This is all about efficiency. But remember, you're not just paying for the data. You're paying for the ease of access to the data, the way it's organized, right? Um, it's almost like we took all the information your OEM gives you and we fed it through a data analyzer and presented it out through zip driven. And that's what a lot of the other platforms are doing in a sense as well. Um, so you're not paying for data, you're paying for the ease of access and the simplification of the data, right? That's another way to look at it. And then what time period should I expect to see any results, you know, using a, a strategy like this one? Um, listen, in order to see actual real results, you really have to stick with the marketing plan um, for about an entire year, I'd say. Listen, I mean, you, you're gonna go through your ups and downs, your seasonalities through the automotive industry. Um, looking at the data that you're using before, you need to stick with the marketing plan um, throughout the year and have the ability to pivot where you need to, but you don't, need to completely quit after you have a bad month because it's the automotive industry everybody's going to have that month that they wish they didn't have um it's about having um persistence in your market plan and belief knowing that the data will eventually pay off um and then another question that i you know get asked is you know can i use you know specifically zip driven without using peer cards as my digital marketing partner? And that answer is absolutely. Um, it's, it's your data, so you should definitely be, have access to it. Um, so that was a really, really quick uh, webinar. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Here's my contact info. If you guys have any other um, you know, questions that you wanna talk about offline or 
if there's questions you guys want to ask me now, please go ahead and ask away. Give you guys a couple minutes. If anybody was listening. All right, guys. Well, it looks like I was either really, really good at my job or really, really bad. I'll take the latter. Um, I don't see any questions coming in. Um, but thanks for jumping on, guys. Appreciate it. And have a good day. Bye.